Hello, we're now part K of the introduction to cloud computing and big data slash data engineering. And this is Jeffrey Fox uh, uh, giving these lectures. And this particular part is our first part on applications. So the big, this, there are really two topics here, big data, some relatively odd slides illustrating the breadth of big data and where it comes from. And also some work of Bob Marcus from NIST, um, who introduced some pretty interesting business usage, pa usage patterns, which tell you how to use their software we discussed in an earlier um, case. All right. So here's the, here is this old, seems to come from a talk from Oracle in 2010. That was when I was first uh, discussing big data in conferences. And it told you what happened in a minute. We had in those days 600 new videos uploaded. And um, 20,000 posts on Tumblr and 98,000 tweets and things like that. 100 new LinkedIn accounts. So it was, things were happening all over the place. Flickr, WordPress, Firefox, search, emails, blogs, domains. Everything was Pandora music. All of these numbers are much bigger now, but as I mentioned in one of an earlier, it's actually quite hard to get these basic pretty pictures updated because people have moved on. They don't discuss basic big data any longer. Here's a result we commented on it every year, the incredible number of images. This unit is millions, so here we have three billion, um, which is the number of um, uh, photos shared per day. And this over these basic uh, platforms, um, doesn't include WeChat, um, and the Chinese platforms, but it includes the other ones. And you can see this very rapid growth. So, the growth in the number of images is staggering. I mean, it used to be when one had just a, in what Kodak would call a shoebox. All the images an individual had were sitting in a little shoebox, and people, when they got their uh, photos developed, put them in the shoebox. That was a pretty interesting situation. So, Previous slide was images, now we're at uh, YouTube. If you remember the old Oracle 2010 talk, YouTube was um, 25 hours of, uh, uploaded every minute, so it's now up to 100. And in fact, on September the 1st, 2016, 300 hours per minute. Uh, we, I have some data on that elsewhere. And um, Say 25 hours of somewhere around here. So you can even see that's about right. That's what that previous plot said. So this is a, this is video, it's a dramatic equivalent to a dramatic, dramatic number of images. So here is the YouTube statistics on September 1, 2016. One of the few places I found that have real, real numbers. Here's the 300 number. Uh, number of languages, 54. The user submitted video with the most views, which is some well-known video called Charlie Bit My Finger. And that was 829 million at that state. And it is now 854 uh, million. <coughs> 3.25 5 billion hours of video view per, per month. And over 10. Thousand videos have generated over a billion views, and 30% of the viewers are from the U.S. So lots and lots of wonderful, huge numbers. Um, well, here is um, the zettabyte plot, and um, zettabyte is um, what well, is uh, a million petabytes, and um, the largest science is maybe 100 petabytes, which is um, this total here. It's a tiny fraction. It's total, which is maybe 10, well, in 
2018, and it must be up to 15 zettabytes. So it's a this is a tiny fraction. I don't even know how many zeros. There are four zeros here. Five times ten to the minus five. Tiny number. You can make it a bit bigger by making a percent point oh oh five percent. So this is Z I mean we have a plot of Cisco network bandwidth, which is zettabytes of transfer. Here's an interesting plot showing what supports this. Um, here's the global data growth going up in petabytes. Um, and there's millions of petabytes, which is zettabytes, as far as I know. Because um, the data in the digital universe is zettabytes. Um, and here we have the cost. Storage is getting cheaper. And that, of course, is allowing us to, to store the increasing amount of data. Here's a nifty uh, couple of slides from uh, Bill Rue, who's the vice president of software for GE. They have a software division in Silicon Valley. I think there's about 1,000 people in it nowadays. Builds the software called Predix, which is their Internet of Things software. And in 2012, which is when this talk was given, Twitter was 80 gigabytes per day, and GE gas turbines had lots of monitors pouring data back to the GE cloud, and uh, that data volume is seven times larger than Twitter. So this shows the industrial internet. This is the industrial internet. is a pretty important concept. There's also I, I, uh, I, o, I, I, o, T, Industrial Internet of Things, which uh, put, captures all the things which are on the internet of industrial importance. And so they're monitoring these 25,000 engines, and uh, they analyze them to try to um, understand and, um, and possible problems and be ready when the la aircraft lands to mend those problems. So this is a pretty important in getting um, greater safety and more efficient maintenance. So here are the uh, Bob Marcus uh, uses patterns. And this is lots of users. These are the lots of users performing interactive queries and updates on a database. Here's the database. We allow it to be SQL or NoSQL. And then we have to generate the query. The query is processed, and then it goes back to the storage. And this storage is loaded, unbeknownst to the user, in various ways through streaming and batch technology. And this is either traditional SQL um, or NoSQL or whatever we have. I mean, things like Apache Drill can query with SQL, all sorts of things. Here is a pretty important one, the streaming data one. So here's the user trying to uh, process streaming data. They establish a filter which identifies the data they want. Uh, the data comes in, is posted into Apache Kafka or RabbitMQ, it gets stored in a repository, but it goes in real time to be processed. And then important events are identified and fed back to the user. So that's a classic real-time data analysis scenario. All right, here is a such called um, uh, horror, I mean, moving data from one store to another. So we have uh, the streaming data, the web services, the database it goes uh, in temporarily into HDFS, maybe with HBase, then it gets transformed and sent to the enterprise warehouse which accumulates all the world's data. All right, here is something which I do more of, big data analytics. So we have data storage again. That's loaded again in various ways from streaming to batch. Uh, then we have our basic programming models. This, if you remember, like, right, rightly was level 15 and uh, 15B, if I remember rightly. Then we run stuff on it. We might do a SQL query using Hive, which is SQL on MapReduce, or we can go to Mahout or R, 
or our own libraries Spidal and do uh, analytics clustering, so on. All right. Um, here we have the last of the ones I'm uh, going to look through to, today. Uh, sorry, in this set I have another important one later on, uh, which is usage pattern 10, which illustrates orchestration. I mentioned orchestration when I was looking at the software layers, because the last layer, layer 17, is uh, orchestration. And so this supports the same thing we have before, the data, <coughs> the programming model. But then we had multiple um, data analytics, one, two, and three. These are separate jobs which are linked together, which is this orchestration or workflow stage. The here, our favorite user is specifying the pipeline, what we want to run in these three different places, and linking them together. Well, the system links them together after being told to link them together. If you want to look at the example of this here, which is the last slide, it comes from Hortonworks. Uh, the yarn, use of yarn, they illustrate it by showing all these capabilities <coughs> from uh, uh, which were all in our software model, um, software HPC ABDS software. And these are just offered as capabilities which are examples of the things that will be linked together. So the orchestration is the linking of this tab to that tab and so on. And of course, we always have HDFS. I told you how important that was, sitting in the background holding the data. And all these tools assume HDFS, or at least they all have a mode where they operate with HDFS. And we also allow other data methods.